How's it going everybody? Andrew Robinson here back at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the amazing, incredible object JIT.Matrix Set. JIT.Matrix Set is a great object and it is super useful if you're trying to create cool video delays or loop effects. Um, and it can be kind of daunting if you've never touched it, but it's actually incredibly easy to use. So we're just going to break it down nice and easy and jump right into this video. All right, so JIT.Matrix set. Let's first go ahead and create that object. And uh, you can see it says a set of matrices for storage and resequencing. And if we right click and open up that help file, um, we're gonna see there's this video of the basketball. Uh, and we have this uh, set up here that is a metro going into a counter that counts zero to 14. And that goes to this index message. Then we have that same sort of setup um, except it's random and there's an output matrix. So the way JIT.matrix set works is we have the object um, and it's got this uh, stuff over here, which is our normal jitter matrix um, information with your four data planes, uh, your alpha RGB, your data type being char, and then your dimension size, 320 by 240. But the very first number, the very first number before all of that is the number of frames that we want to store. So this JIT.matrix set is set to 15, which means it's going to store 15 frames, which is also why our counter is counting zero to 14. That's 15 numbers, zero being a number for the index. And then random outputting, again, 15 random values uh, that are going to be our frames. So if we click this Metro and turn it on, you're gonna see it's gonna start counting up. We're gonna play this video from right there and it's gonna record those frames at those numbers. And if we turn this one on, it's going to output randomly those frames at, you know, in whatever random order. So we get this cool effect. And if we turn this back on and press play again, we could probably start to record some other of those frames and get that random playback from them. And that's pretty cool. If you look at this tab, it says video delay. And it's got this really cool effect where uh, it's showing you how to create a video delay effect. And if you just increase this value, you offset essentially how many frames it's delayed by. So this is the original video, and this is the same video, but like that 27 frames behind. Um, and you see, it's kind of, it's very similar. We have the video going into the matrix set. We have a trigger object that is hitting this counter and counting um, repeatedly from 0 to 29 because we've got 30 frames set for recording and we are indexing those f incoming frames from this video at these values and then right after it does that um, we are sending this output message uh, to the matrix set and it's the same counter value but again we're adding this offset to it and then we're wrapping it around um, using the modulo so it stays within that 0 to 29 frame range um, and so then this is just going to be this many frames behind whatever that counter value is so we will always be that many frames delayed and it's a pretty cool effect and it's very simple just like that but um, we're gonna do something a little bit fancier uh, using the same stuff this is literally all it is is you're just taking uh, an an integer value to set the index and then you're going to take an integer value to say output that frame and you just you know that's it so super easy so let's uh, let's see how we can do this ourselves we're gonna first start by creating a jit dot world I'm gonna say at floating one at FS menu bar zero at FS a one now I'm gonna add some extra stuff in here this time I'm also going to say at sync zero and at FPS 60 now what those objects or what those attributes do is it's going to make sure that our jit.world is going to render at 60 frames a second no matter what. By default, we have jit.world sync one, which means that the refresh rate and like how often this updates its frames is synced to your monitor. So if you've got a really good computer, you know, you can get 120 frames a second and all that. This, by setting it to zero, you're just turning that syncing compatibility off so that we can actually use the FPS uh, attribute to define how many frames a second we want. So if we wanna like limit ourselves to a very specific frame rate, this is how you do that. And we're going to limit ourselves to 60 frames a second because it's going to make the math 
for this JIT.matrix set easier. If we wanted to create a loop, which is the goal, um, and we wanted our loop to be five seconds, and we know we're getting 60 frames a second, we just gotta take 60 times five, which is going to be 300. And then again, we're just gonna throw that normal jitter stuff in there. I'm gonna say four char, and I'm also gonna say uh, 1280 by 720, because I believe that is the dimension size of my webcam for my computer. Um, and that's what I'm going to use because I'm going to be using the webcam. So let's then bring the webcam in, which is the jit.grab object. And that's awesome. That's super easy. We're just going to send it an open message, which is going to turn it on. And then if we patch this into the jit.gl video plane, which we're going to give the attribute at transform reset so that that video plane reaches the edge of our window. And I totally forgot to attach a toggle to the jit.world and click it and turn that to render on. We're going to then see our webcam in our window. And that is me. That is me right there. Um, but everything's uh, flipped, which is like normal for people, I guess. But uh, I'm raising, you know, my right hand and I want to see it on the right side of the screen. So we're going to slide a jit.dim map object in here. And we're going to say at invert one, which is going to flip it on the X axis. Um, and I'm going to hold, I'm going to click the object. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my computer. And I'm going to slide that right there. So we see all the circles light up and that's going to slip it right in between that patch cord. And I don't even have to unpatch anything. And you can see it worked. We flipped the, the image on the X axis. So now I'm raising my right hand and I see it on the right side of the screen. That makes more sense to my brain. Um, so we're doing it that way. And that's it. Okay, we've got our camera into our video plane. Next, we're going to want to read the camera directly into the jitter.matrix set. And we have to do this in kind of a smart way because uh, we need to be able to index the frames and then output the frames and then flip between what we're seeing. We have to flip between the real time actual camera where I am now moving and seeing myself talk as I move um, and then the loop that we're trying to create with jit.matrix set. So it shouldn't be too complicated, but we just gotta be smart about it. And we're gonna take this in steps. The first thing we're going to do is make sure we are indexing things properly. So we're going to create a counter and we're going to count zero to 300 um, and because we just want that extra frame. And we're gonna say modulo 300, um, which is going to help um, keep this counter uh, countable. Uh, this is a little trick I learned. Um, we're going to use the maximum flag in a second, um, which is just, it tells you when we've hit the maximum value of the count. But sometimes when you're doing things really fast, it can kind of skip by that, and that's not good. Um, so if we take this into a modulo object, we get a much more reliable notice when we hit that maximum. That's kind of um, going to be important. Uh, so we're gonna do it like this uh, for that to work, and we're going to then say prepend, which is going to create a message, and we're gonna say index, because that is the message to store the frame at whatever value. So we're gonna patch our counter object into that, and that's going to go into the prepend index, and that's going to go into our jitter dot matrix set. Now what we wanna do is we want to output the frame to the matrix set, and then count this so that way our frame stays synced with the counter we don't want to do it like it was in the help file where you turn on a metro because that's going on its own rate if we want very specifically like this frame is this index value we want the frame to trigger the counter and to do that we're going to use a trigger object we're going to say trigger bang l um, or bl which stands for bang and the l stands for list the jitter stuff works as a list for the trigger object. So if we patch that in here, we can then patch our video data out into the matrix set. And then we're going to immediately send a bang to this counter. Um, so that way, every time this gets a frame, this is going to get a bang and it's going to start indexing. And if we actually have our little hover thing show up, you'll see it does say index and it's currently indexing all of these frames, which is super cool. Um, so we've got that. Now, the next step is we sort of need to repeat this process, except we want to um, have it output then. So we're going to just copy this over and we're going to change the message from index to output matrix, which is the correct message for it to output the matrix um, from the jit.matrix set. Now, here's where it's going to get a little bit tricky because we want it to record whatever frames are doing and then flip over to this. 
So we're going to do that by using a gate object. We're going to say gate two. All right. Um, now this bang that is doing um, this counter is going to be our first gate out. So we're going to patch it into the right inlet because this is the gated inlet. Um, whatever goes in this right inlet is what's going to be coming out of these outlets, which you can create as many as you want by just whatever number you define. We said two, so we're getting two outlets. And the first one is going to be our first counter message. Um, and when, when we start things, we want this gate to be open because we want to be able to see the video and the actions that we are doing in the camera um, as we're creating the loop. So that to do that, we have to tell this outlet to open, which we can do using the one message. Um, so if we patch this in here, lock our patch, which I just held down the command key on my keyboard, clicked in the blank space, and you see it locked it. You can also click this icon. You want it to be locked right now. And then you're gonna click this one, um, and that's gonna pass the one through this patch cord to this uh, left inlet, which is going to tell the first outlet to open. So now this outlet is open, these bangs are coming through, we're getting those index values again, and it's going to start indexing them. Now, um, when it hits that maximum value, that, three, that third hundred frame, um, or that, I guess actually what we wanna do is when it wraps back around to zero. We want it to then switch the gate from this gate to this gate, um, which we're going to do by creating a message now for two, and we're gonna patch that into there, and this bang is gonna come out into that two. So when we go through all 300 frames and we wrap back around to zero, we're gonna send a bang out. It's going to hit this one and flip to this gate being open, which it just, it's already done. It says it's now open. And then we're gonna start sending bangs out to this counter, which is going to then start, you know, causing this sequence to run. And we're going to get the output of the matrix, which then if we patch that into the matrix set, you'll see it's now looping whatever I was doing uh, <laughs> when I recorded that. So that's perfect. Um, but you'll see it's like looping the frames in order, right? So we're going uh, sequentially just up the sequence right now. If we wanted to create the boomerang effect where it goes forwards and then backwards, we're going to just put a number two right here, which tells the counter to count palindrome style. So it's going to go up and then back down. So we're already actually almost there because now we have created the loop effect we just need to get everything to flip around uh, v properly, which is actually very easy as well. We're going to use a switch object, which is very similar to a gate in that you define a certain number, but rather than getting outlets, we're going to get inputs. So we said switch to, and now we have two extra inputs. We still have this leftmost one, which is going to control which, of, which inlet of the switch is the active inlet. So we're gonna want the camera to come down into one, and we're gonna want the matrix set to come down into the other. And if we patch it in like that, uh, it's gonna stop because they're both closed right now, but we're going to essentially, what we want is similarly, when this gate is open and indexing things, we want to be able to see our camera view. So we're just gonna borrow this one and patch that right in there. And then similarly, uh, when this uh, is done doing its sequencing and it flips to wanting to show this like looped output uh, view, we want the second switch inlet to then be open. So we're just gonna also borrow that too. Super easy, just like that. And now when we hit this one message, um, it should, uh, well, we're almost there, almost there. I forgot one simple step, and that is that we also then have to reset these counters. So we're gonna uh, create another message with the number zero in it, and we're gonna patch that into this uh, inlet that says reset counter number immediately, and we're gonna do it for both of those. And then we're just gonna press B to create a button, and this button is going to then do things 
uh, in the order that we want them to do so that everything is all set up nice and easy to work um, just like that. So we're going to do trigger bang bang, um, which is going to send a bang out first to reset the counters and then to show the correct um, the correct view for our our uh, video that we have going on. So uh, let's do that. Let's just lock the patch, click this button, and I'm moving in real time and talking in things. And after five seconds, it's going to then take that and it does in fact grab it and loop it. Um, and it is doing it backwards, but we actually want to start from the end of the loop and go backwards first and then play forwards. And right now it's starting at the beginning and playing forward and going backwards. So it doesn't look very realistic. Easy fix also. We're just gonna take this number and we're going to do our subtract reverse divide from 300. Um, so that way, rather than starting zero, going up to 300 and then back down to zero, we're gonna start at 300, go down to zero, and then back up to 300. So let's do that. Uh, that's now patched in there. Once again, we're going to click the button and see if this works. I'm going to start moving and talking, do a little dance, uh, whatever seems right. And oh, that was a seamless loop. Look at that flipping right around back to the beginning. And oh, oh my God, that's looping perfectly. Yes, so wonderful. And that was pretty easy to create. There's a little bit of logic to how these like gates are working. Um, but you know, you see it's pretty easy we've got the the first uh our real-time camera coming in the first inlet and uh coming out the first outlet of this gate so it's doing the sequencing thing properly and showing us what we're seeing what we're going to be sequencing and then the second outlet is the actual jit dot matrix set doing the looping effect which again so easy to set up so Hopefully that was all pretty clear and you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you did, please remember to like and subscribe because that lets me know that uh, I'm doing a pretty good job of uh, explaining these things. And I really always appreciate seeing uh, more people come and find the channel and just getting getting the help they need with Max MSP. That's what I'm here for. Um, so we're going to keep going. Thanks so much for watching uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.